Good morning. Give honor to the praise and glory of God. Welcome to the first Sunday of the Advent people. The grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Praise God's holy name. Amen. We will now have the introit by the choir. Our opening hymn, O Come, O 
Kong, Manuel. O 
merciful God, you are the light and our food. Come to us in our worry and distress. Drive away our fear. Come to rule the world with your truth and grace. Guide the nations to reflect the glory of your justice and love. Make us ready to observe the work of the Prince of Peace, that we may work always for the coming of your perfect peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We will now have the lighting of the Advent. On each Sunday of Advent, we light a new candle, a sign of hope in the world full of shadows. When all four candles are burning brightly, we will know that it is time to begin the Christmas feast of light. We want to be ready to welcome the light of the world into our lives. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let this light shine so that we may remember to bring the light of Jesus' presence to all people. While we have the light, believe in the light so that you may become the children of the light. God, Come, let, let us walk in the light of the Lord.
heir of Israel. The Lord our God is the Lord in one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this Lord. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this Lord. And a new commandment I give you that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Lord, have mercy upon us, and by all we should love in our hearts and deeds to you. The prayer of confession together. You have promised, O Lord, to forget your anger and remember our sins no more. We do the best that we have brought all these thoughts.
Those are prepared to communion table for us and also special welcome to other guests who will celebrate like one, uh, Vice President of the conference, uh, the conference here, Thomas Person Fifty Five Conference. I'd also like to highlight those who are celebrating birthday and special occasion, the anniversaries here. Today is Sister Maisie Rush celebrating on the 1st of December. On the 2nd, we are De Niro, Russell, and Lynette Williams celebrating on the 2nd. On the 3rd, we are Sister Patricia Hinson and Emery Seymour. On the 4th, we are, on the 2nd also, we have Atelia Bowman. Uh, on the 4th, we have Ellen Wilson. Killack. On the fifth, we have Darcel Jane Ridley. On the seventh, we have Denise Bethel and Rochelle Rowe. We also have happy anniversary greetings going out to Darcel Jane Ridley and Elkana Ridley on the fifth. So we'd like to sing for them and pray for them. And wish them well. Thank you. 
ministry of the word. We will have the Old Testament reading by Sister Eva Light and the New Testament reading by Sister Amanda Rose. The scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah 33, reading verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Testament reading comes from Thessalonians chapter 3, verses reading 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we can see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father Himself. And our Lord Jesus, direct our way to you. And may the Lord that make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he strengthen you so that your heart in holiness, that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now have a selection after which we'll have the reading of the gospel and the sermon by Dr. Volcano. Thank you, Brother Brett. I'd just like to do a selection for you. Thank you. 
We are in the Advent season, a season of expectation of the coming of Jesus, which would represent the end of all things which we know. You know when Jesus comes, you don't have to pay no more life bill. You know that, right? Everything finished. You don't have to plan no party, you don't have to do nothing. When Jesus comes, that's it. Everything finished. And so we are in that season of expectation. Uh, coming of Jesus, which will represent the end of all things, which we know. The Advent season represents the season of light. To a dark world, the season of light has come. Jesus. The Advent also represents the end of all things and the beginning of all things new. Everything will be new at the coming of Jesus. Life and all its troubles and trials and all its joys and sorrows will be over. There will be no more trouble except for those who have not trusted in the Lord as their Savior. If you trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's time to worry then. It's better to worry now than then. Amen? Get yourself ready if you're not ready. That's all we can say. Get ready. If you're not ready, get ready. And if you are ready, Stay ready. That is what one of the announcers used to say on the radio. And so we look at the end times as if we are looking for the end of our own life here on earth. And the coming of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, the coming of the kingdom of God is the rule of God in the hearts and the minds and in the lives of all God's people. You know what? Life is sweet. Isn't it? Yes, you might have pains and you might have Bills to pay, but life still is sweet because life is God given to us. And uh, we, if the people faithful and committed to Jesus, then we will have the eternal life. And that is life forevermore. I remember sitting in the office there in the Princess Margaret Hospital where I used to work some years ago, and uh, the radio was playing this song in the office. When the home gates swing open for me. That will be a happy day when all the saints are gone away. From my cares I shall be free when the home gates swing open for me. And I said to the lady there, I said, Would you like for the home gate to swing open for you right now? She said, No, child, I won't see many grandchildren. <laughs> I said, You know what? <laughs> You see a grandchild, they might turn you away from the home gates. If the home gates swing open for you right now, you should be ready to go, amen? amen. No child, no boy, no grandchild in them. When the home gates swing open for you, you better be ready to go because it means that Jesus is ready for you. There's nothing and no one in this world who should keep you back from going to be with him. Whether we like it or not, we are living in those end times. Evil has not changed. It has just changed faces. For indeed, leaders of the world who still practice their evil even now, from the time of Pharaoh, when he wanted to kill the Israelites, even to this new time of kings and queens and rulers, there is nothing that can deter evil from the minds of persons who perpetuate evil in this world. It would seem that the more power persons have, the more evil persons are. And it seems that power corrupts, as we said, and absolute power corrupts. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I was uh, on the on the online last evening just looking at uh, whatever. And uh, just to see the news that they have been the shooting, uh, shooting in one of the areas where and uh, two persons have died, and another one. And we hear the, 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 the uh, person who's bringing the news say, Oh, last year was about uh, 100, and, 100 and something. And then this year now, it's 100, it's far over. That sounds really bad because, I mean, why are we killing one another? Why? You know, life is short already. You wait for one or two days, you die anyway. But you will kill us, you know. What, what's, what's the point? For bad news, for public publicity. When persons feel like they have no one to whom they are accountable, they would remove all of the stops and commit all of the atrocities.
philosophy and imaginable man. This is just human nature. Remember King David when he had sinned against God in 2 Samuel 24, verse 14. David answered God, G-A-D, God. He said to God, I am deeply distressed. Please, let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great. In other words, David preferred to fall into the hands of the Lord than to fall into the hands of man. Because man, man had a wicked ear. Man had really wicked. Advent is a time of expectancy, and yet, if we are not ready, Jesus says, the day of the Lord will come upon us unexpectedly. Here we are thinking that you have made plans and you want to enjoy what you have, or you want to complete your bucket list of things that you have done yet. You want to travel around the world, you want to do this and do that. Whatever you want to do, yet you do not realize that. It is because of the mercies of God that you and I are now here and alive. You know that? You could have been one of those statistics of the year in whatever way by tragedy or natural causes. But God has seen it fit for us to see this new part. You know that? Yes, he has given us life. And with that life, you have to celebrate him. You have to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our life. We have that done so already. My brothers and sisters, we can't wait till the last minute. We do not know what will happen this afternoon or tomorrow. That was not given to us. What is given to us is the time right now. Right now. He said, if we hear his voice, pardon not your heart. Give your heart to him. Yes, every day you and I, we fight against not just flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and high things. And Satan will not appear to us in a red suit and a pitchfork and horns on his head and a long tail. No, evil is attractive and deceptive. And that is why persons like to practice evil. But believe me, they will be caught because God sees and God knows everything. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but whenever you die, you understand before God, amen. So nobody getting away with nothing. No thing you're getting away with. Whatever you do, you will have to give an account for it. God then is our protection. He is our refuge and he is our strength. And a very present help in these times of trouble. We can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will also have to pray, as Jesus said, pray always. Never cease. Pray. And there's so much to pray for, isn't there? Yes, there's so much to pray for. Because from the minute we get up out of our bed, you have to say your prayer. You're going to find something to, to fuss about and or carry on about. But when you pray, you don't have to worry about it. Amen? Once you give it to God, He will handle it. You don't think God can handle it better than we do? Oh, yes, He does. Had those all of those things that uh, and we do. Jesus said we have to be sober. And sober means, well, we don't mean we will always have to watch over our shoulders nowadays. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen and what's going to go out where. Because that's how people are. And it doesn't matter which country you're in, it doesn't matter where you are, something will always go out. Because people are planning evil all the time. You know that, right? Yes, just like how you plan something good, somebody planning evil. Who are we going to rob today? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then they think about you. Also, and so look across the street. You think they have money. So let's go rob. That's how they think, you know. It, it, that is the thinking of the criminal. And so, just like how the thief comes unaware, he just said, So will I come unaware? No thieves come to your house and say, Hey, you're breaking your house. I'm going to break in your house. Nobody, nobody says that. They go there and they do what they have to do and they leave. And so we must expect Jesus at any time to come or to call. No matter what we be planning, we may not carry it out because Jesus will come and call when he's good and ready. And so my brothers and sisters, as the year is coming to an end, my mother always used to say, all of those who are booked for 
this year I'm going to have to leave. I said, not this book for this year. He said, yeah, it's book for the year. In other words, if you're going to die in 2024, you can die in it. I don't know how many of us will see 2025, but that's how it is. You book for the year you can. You are going. All right, and so that's how it is. My brothers and sisters, but we have a right to give our hearts and minds to the Lord. But if we are booked for this year, remember that nothing, nothing and nobody can stop it. I don't know if that's why persons are superstitious when it comes to watch night. You know, some people come to church and watch night. Some people say, I come to church and watch night so that I can spend the last of the year right. Or some say, I come to the end of the new year right. But you know what? You can't take this medicine the last minute. You have all of your time to get ready for Jesus for one thing. All of our lives we spend getting ready for the time when he comes. We don't have no excuse. And you ought to tell others about it as well. My brothers and sisters, some persons say they want to end it right, some want to begin it right. But it shouldn't really matter how we die, but it matters when we die and if we're going to meet. This is what Advent is all about, preparing to meet Jesus. For he will come or he will fall. He will come or he will fall. You notice that love begins, some of many persons have begins began the year and not with us, for whatever reason. But Jesus will come or he will fall like the thief in the night. And we see the signs, he said, you will see the signs, just like how we know. It's going to rain. The sky turns pink. It's going to rain. All the clouds look heavy and they're going to drop those rain drops. Also, Jesus said, the signs are there when I will come or when I will fall. All the signs are there for you to, to know when you're sober, you spiritually are suit to what is going on. When you see what is going on, you're aware. That is why prayer is important. And when we are in communication with you, he will reveal things to us. You know, some persons know when they're going to die. You know that? I tell you, uh, my grandmother used to give stories. And she said, the lady said to her, one of her cousins, she said, Oh, uh, when you're going to die, please let me know. Do you have anything like that? She said, Yes. Yeah. She said, Okay. So she was on a deathbed, and she said, Go and call. She said, as soon as the lady reached the door, say, how, oh, you know, when people die, start on their toes and go up. She said, the body just start like that. She said, yes, sister, I know you make it to the job. You reach the other side. Yes, some people know when they're going to die. I don't know if it's now, but uh, some people actually know. They can't tell you the time and the date. They can say, I'm going to die very soon. And so, get things in order. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is what our prayer life is all about. God reveals things to us. God will show us through. God will help us as we journey through this time of Advent. It might be every day, you know, every year comes, every minute, every second, everything comes. Everything comes. Because once we pass this way, we will not pass this way again. There's only one. After the time that passed this morning, 9 o'clock, you can't go back to that. That's gone. That's history now. We only have what is now and what is ahead of us. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we have to say, oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart. Amen. Oh, gracious God, I have Father, we stand in the gap. We stand in the gap for others who may not know about you. They're just going about their daily routine, not knowing when you would come or fall. Some persons leave home and will not return. Some persons say goodbye and then we don't know if that's the last of the time. We don't know when we see persons to the last or persons to see us to the last. It's not morbid for us to think about our mortality, but it's so bad for us. For in the end, you did tell us that you would come like a thief in the night. You 
didn't warn us that we should accept you as Lord and Savior of our life. For indeed, Lord, we know that you are our Savior, our salvation, Emmanuel, God with us. You have opened our eyes afresh to your coming in this Advent season, when we expect you. And Lord, help us to be ready and be a ready people to come. Help us to know you in the pardoning of our sin. Help us to spread that good word of comfort and salvation to others. Those who are dying there, those who are walking around, those who do not know you. May they know you and the fullness of your love and healing grace. We pray for leaders of the world for those who are threatening the tariffs and how things may change in our shopping lists or on the shelves and stores. Pray for those who are experiencing medical problems or want to travel doctor's expenses, real life expenses, prices of things going up. We pray for our mighty dollar to stretch and make persons comfortable in living, buying, getting what is needed. We pray for our children and young people, Lord, those who are preparing for examinations in the day. Have a good time of study and divulge to have good grades, but not just good grades, but to live lives worthy of you. Pray for their parents and guardians, those who are in charge of them. We try our best to give them their best and help them stay mature. We also bring before you, O Lord, leaders in any area of our country, those who are police force, defense force, those who are shopping yards, those who are businesses, we pray for their success. We pray for the tourists who have come to visit these shores. May they find peace and joy and may they know you even better to make uh, interaction with your people. We also pray for ourselves, the church, as we are headed for another conference, the picking of a new bishop or other leaders. We pray for hands and hearts and finances and spiritual spirituality and all the rest of it to be strengthened. We pray for those delegates who are travel. May they experience you in the fullness of joy, find safety in sojourning and return. We also bring before you ourselves, Lord, you know us, you know our weaknesses, you know our strengths, you know the things that keep us back. Help us to use them as stepping stones, all of those obstacles in our lives. Give us all that we need for each and every new day. We pray the prayer of Father. Help us to know you and serve you the best we can. But if you are willing for us, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stand and say, Amen.
Please remember our sick and shut-ins and continue to pray on this exam whenever possible. They are listed below. Deepest sympathy is extended to Sister Rochelle and Julie Rule on the passing of her mother, Verna Mae Duncan. The funeral service is planned for Saturday, December 14 at 10 a.m. here at St. Paul. Brother Freddy Bethel and his family on the passing of his niece, Esther Moon. Memorial service will take place at St. Andrews next Thursday at 5 p.m. Brother Percy Johnson and family on the passing of his sister, Joanna Johnson. Sister Lynn Corstein's on the passing of her brother, William Minnis. He will be laid to rest this coming Saturday, December 7th, at St. David's Methodist Church. Continue to keep in prayer, Sister Patricia Dickinson, on the death of her dear friend, Beverly Cooper, who was laid to rest this past Friday. Continue to pray for all who are mourning at this time. These are the announcements. And we ask you to please stand for the offertory prayer. Almighty God, as we come before you with our offerings, we are reminded of our constant need for you in our lives. You are our provider, our sustainer, and our strength. Without you, we are nothing. May these gifts be a symbol of our dependence on you. We acknowledge that all we have comes from you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
offering your gift upon the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has a grievance against you. Leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled with your brother or sister, then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Please pass the peace to the person next to you. Thanksgiving. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the grace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, 
We praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, what are our hearts? And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive, Christ is risen, Christ is alive. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which you break is the sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. The cup of blessing which you bless is the sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, we are many, we are one body, because we share the one Lord and the God and the Savior. Let's pray our prayers and we'll access you may be seated. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy. Now that you forgive us of our own. We are not ready to pray up and come to your table. Oh, this your nature always has mercy and our life to be there. So lead us to the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he us. Amen. Amen. things of God, for the people of God, all who are in love and charity with their neighbor, and of his love to lead a new life one with the mercies of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take the bread which is his body broken for you, and the wine which is his blood shed for you, feed on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. Go ahead.
God in prayer with us praying. Oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are always seeing us through. As we are in the end times, oh Lord, there's so much we face, but bless you within us that we will see the world. We are overcomers, we Christ, we conquer us all. Bless us all, guide us all, and keep us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We pray our prayer. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord.
Just before we have the benediction, I'd like to thank Mr. Smith, the family, and the hospitality committee for helping out for food afterward and ask we have God's continued blessing upon them as we share in that day. Yea, amen, the Lord your hand, high of thy eternal throne, say to take the power and the glory and claim the kingdom for thy own. Hallelujah! Everlasting God. Come down, Lord. You have come down on us, you have told us how to live, and you have died for us and rose for us. That's the case. Now we go our several ways, Lord. We pray that you would be with us, to guide us, to guide us, and protect us. The blessing of God, mighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest of thy each of us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you.